you don't have to look hard to find this street's exception to the rule. For the past 76 years, this 168-year-old single-family home has been frozen in time, the last artifact of a once great neighborhood lost to time. It was the place to live in Gilded Age St. Louis. From the 1850s to the 1880s, Lucas Place was St. Louis's first private neighborhood. Expensive, exclusive, exquisite. And this house, the Campbell House at 1508 Locust, was the first one built and is the last one standing. In 1943, it was turned into a museum. We do think of this house as a gem because especially when you come inside, it just sparkles. When it was built in 1851, it was the smallest house in the neighborhood, about half the size of the behemoths around it. Still, it was big enough to hold eight bedrooms for the family and nine more for the staff, so they could be on call 24 hours a day. Robert and Virginia Campbell gave their modest mansion the look of a palace, covering almost every inch of its 10,000 square feet with Gilded Age extravagance. He paid about $12,000 for this structure. Over a six months period, they spent about $40,000 furnishing this house. We really think that was a sign that, you know, they had arrived. And when the last Campbell departed in 1938, a few civic-minded citizens were so worried about the fate of the house, they banded together and raised enough money to buy most of the Campbell's possessions. A large donation from the Sticks Baron Fuller department store was used to buy the building. The Campbell House Foundation has run it as a museum ever since. Just when they walk into this room in the parlor, they, they're kind of gobsmacked because when you walk into the museum, the doors to this room are closed. And we kind of do the big reveal. The pocket doors open and this double parlor with all its Rococo Revival furniture and its carving and gilding is revealed. And people say, how could you live in this room? It looks so uncomfortable. It's so cluttered. It's so crazy. Robert Campbell came to America from Ireland when he was just 19. A bookkeeping job with a fur trading company brought him to St. Louis. But it wasn't long before Campbell became a trapper himself, spending 10 years hunting beaver in the rugged Rocky Mountains. This is the story of Robert Campbell, mountain man. This 2018 BBC film documents that part of his life, but Campbell would go on to become a leading citizen of St. Louis, moving from selling furs to dry goods. He owned ships and ran banks. The Campbells did have 13 children, um, but there was never more than four of their children living at any one time. Scourges like cholera, measles, diphtheria, took 10 of those little ones who died before the age of eight. Only three lived to adulthood, all men and all bachelors. They refused offers to sell. They had enough money to maintain the building. It must have been a very weird feeling for them to grow up in this neighborhood. You imagine. Uh, in that Civil War era, it was leafy green and kind of very quiet and elegant. And by the 1920s, it was hustle and bustle, and they were the only ones left. Today, things are changing at the Campbell House for the better. Thanks to extraordinarily positive reviews on TripAdvisor, this past year, the museum saw a 40% increase in visitors. But what has not changed is that most of them are from out of town. What they'd really like to see here is more people visiting from here, learning about a remarkable family, a glorious home, and civic leaders who took action before time ran out. The St. Louisans who've never been here, or even worse, never heard of it, uh, are really missing an opportunity to learn about their city in the 19th century. And when you come down here to the Campbell House and get a tour, you get a very good sense of that. The jewel and the crown of this story is the fact that these objects help tell the story of this family.